how do I get into my router settings? What is the IP address? And um, what settings do I even change? Those were a bunch of common questions I received after my last video all about internet connectivity and speed. So I thought today what we're going to do is let me take you through the step-by-step -step instructions of how to get into your router and what are some of the settings that I always change on my router and you can do the same on yours. Let's do it. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button. Now before we start, you cannot get more bandwidth than your service provider gives you. I want to be clear because the last video people were blowing me up saying you cannot get more. I know that. You cannot get more bandwidth than your service provider gives you. But what you can do is ensure that you have the fastest, cleanest possible connectivity between your various devices, your phones, your tablets, your laptops, whatever you happen to have in the house and the router. So you get the maximum bandwidth, the maximum speed, the least interference so that you can take advantage of what you're paying for with your service provider. So I hope that's clear. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go find your router or router, depending where in the world you're from. Look on the box itself. You're going to find some stickers and on those stickers or labels, they're going to give you some information. Typically, it's underneath. Let me show you what that looks like. So on my Netgear one, there's the router login. That's the username and there's the password as well. Now that you have that, go back to your PC. If you have nothing on your router, no problem, go into your Windows machine, drop down to command, type CMD and open up this application. Now let me bring that up in center. Now what you're going to type in here is ipconfig and then press enter. What that will do is it will show you your default gateway. There it is. You see that? and then it will give you the IP address of that default gateway. In most cases, that is going to be the IP address that you're going to enter into your web browser so you can get to those router settings. Right, let me show you what that looks like. So let's fire up Chrome, let's put in the address here. And I remember this is going to work on any make and model of router as long as it gives you an admin console to log in, it has to give you an IP address so you can log in and manage that system. Right, speaking of managing that system, what I want to do is I want to go into a port called the internet port. Here it's going to show me my connection. This is my IP address between my connection at home and my service provider. And you can see when the last time it acquired that IP address. This address should refresh every once in a while, every couple of days, depending on your service provider settings. What I like to do every once in a while is just release that IP address, release that connection, and then wait a while and then click on renew to get a fresh connection between me and my service provider. Next set of settings that I like to change is my DNS settings. Typically they're under the internet setup portion. Here you can see you can dynamically receive an IP from your provider. That's cool, leave it as is. But now you wanna change your DNS server. Which DNS server do you use? Well, first of all, I like to use Google DNS. So let me Google what that is. Look at public DNS. And there we go, 8.8.8.8, 8.4.4.4 .8 is my secondary DNS. Now that I know that, I'm going to simply put that into my Netgear router settings, and I'm going to use not my service provider's DNS, but Google's public DNS. I find that to be fastest in my area. Now here, let me be clear, that is good for me in my area. Your area could be different. So how do you know which is a good DNS to use? No problem, go into Google, look up free, public DNS, and then you're going to see a whole host of them. This is a pretty good list called Livewire. Press on that and it will list out a whole bunch of primary and secondary DNS from various provider. Go and play and find the one that's going to work for you. You're looking for a primary DNS and then a secondary DNS. You need to have both in there. So in case one doesn't work, these will fall over to another. By the way, mine says um, tertiary as well. Gives me a third option. I like to put in 1.1.1.1, which is basically Cloudflare's DNS, and I find this combination works really well. I'll have a link up here for other DNS-related videos you can check out as well. What's your Wi-Fi password? That is a common thing that we all get when people come over and they want to use the Wi-Fi. So what I like to do is set up a guest network. 
This guest network doesn't allow people using that segment, that network that it creates, it separates that from my laptop, my servers, my backup drives. It's completely separate network that they could just piggyback on and get out onto the internet without compromising my internal security. So I set up a guest network. I still give them a password. I never leave my Wi-Fi open for anybody to just use. And I give them that password. They could log in with their devices, even have a 5G network or 2.4 gigahertz network. Both just make sure that it's all set up, but make sure that it's separated from your stuff. And speaking of security, I always change mine to WPA, PSK, AES. That is the good, strong encryption, even on your default network and your guest network. And finally on the screen, I just make sure that my channel is not set to auto because auto doesn't do as good of a job as everybody makes it out to be, especially in a very congested area. So I choose the channel that is least congested. There'll be a link up here for a previous video of how to use a Wi-Fi analyzer to find the right channel that is free for you. I make sure I get the maximum speed and make sure that five gigahertz is enabled to capitalize on that. Next up, let's talk access control. This is when you allow certain computers, devices, gaming consoles onto your networks or not. Now I have access control switched on, which essentially means I can control which devices connect versus which devices are automatically rejected and not allowed to be part of this network. I can also block individual devices. I can allow access for individual devices. This is a great spot that if you want to control your kids, for example, PS4 habits, you can go and simply find their gaming consoles and mark that as blocked. So they cannot use the network or their internet whilst they are in blocked mode. And then of course you can simply go ahead and then unblock that as well. Now you can also go block certain sites. Again, very cool for access control, especially if you've got kids around and you want to kind of control what they're watching. This is the way to do it. Find the block sites. You can either block based on keywords or you can put specific sites names in here. And then of course you as the parent can also have a bypass to say that these rules do not apply to your specific IP address. And if you really want to get technical and granular, look for blocked services. This is where you can enable or disable ports. Now ports are essentially the way certain applications use to communicate with the outside world. For example, if you're surfing the web, it's port 80. If you're using an email, it's 25. For example, FTP is 21. So you can block those specific ports if you know what they are and you can be as granular or as wide as you need to be. And of course, get the maximum bandwidth. Now, to be clear, you're never gonna get more than your provider gives you. This is maximum bandwidth that your provider gives you, making sure you can take full advantage of it and shape your network for that purpose. It's always safe to remember the changes that you have made in case you wanna undo it. Nothing is going to happen. Just don't lock yourself out of your router by changing the admin, username, and password. Otherwise, you can undo any of these settings that you've just done. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel a lot, really appreciate it. If you're into this kind of technology, hit the head below to subscribe. Check out some of these other cool videos over here and I'll see you over there.